every time a foul is called and make sure that they know clearly who those fouls are on because that cost them five minutes. He, he scored 11 points in nine minutes, so they couldn't control him. Not that big of a deal. They're only down six. Second half, I'm getting ready to start. Jackie Carmichael now with one foul. So the senior from Manhattan, Kansas, who has accounted for 11 points in nine minutes, comes in. But Daryl McCoy, who guarded him for much of those nine minutes, has three fouls. Back to the stingy man-to-man -man defense go the Redbirds, and there he is. Carmichael immediately making his presence felt, and Ruffin just concedes the dunk. For someone his size, Carmichael has great feet. He has great speed. You saw right there, he shot the passing lane and got a steal. You really, you usually don't see Biggs his size, 6'9", 250, with that kind of motor and that kind of quickness. Yeah, I think right about now the folks in Manhattan, Kansas, and Kansas City are thinking, why is he playing for us again? <laughs> a lot of people are wondering that. But what happens is, you know, sometimes, you know, kids develop at different points in their life. You know, coming out of high school probably was borderline big time. He got in the gym, worked on his skills, and his blossomed. Off the mark that time as he got low in the paint, and a good job of defending it was Darte Ruffin. So a four-point lead for the Dragons as Illinois State continues to bring that very tight man-to-man. -man. They'll shift into a 2-3 occasionally, as Dan Muller says, something we don't do very often, but we'll do it to mix it up and change the pace. Mazinek has it stripped away. Mazinek has gotten all his points from the free-throw line in the first half, something that Drexler, I'm sure, is probably going to want to change. And right to the line is Johnny Hill and one. Good two possessions that time by Hill. He gets he gets the steal on Massinet, and then he gets the bucket at the other end. But, but watch here. Good defense this time by Illinois State. They're working in the post. He sees this opportunity to go for the steal. Shoots the passing lane, but has the coordination wherewithal to put the ball on the floor a few times to get to where he needs to get to. Hill hits the end one, so now it is a one-point game. It was a six-point lead at the half for the Dragons over the Redbirds. 18-24 to play here in the ball game. Massinet is bumped this time. Johnny Hill playing too much defense. But see, Coach Muller doesn't care about that. If you notice, in the first half, Allen was dogging Massinet the whole first half. Right. Now they switched it up, put Hill on him a little bit, and don't be surprised if Allen comes back to him. They just want to try to wear Massinet down try to, you know, just get him a little fatigue to try to throw off this Drexel drag in half-court set in their offense. Massinet out top with a fresh shot clock, and a Biff will fire this one up and hit. They are getting scoring from so many different spots tonight for Bruiser Flint, the head coach. Spreading the wealth, and they push the lead back to three with 18 minutes to play in the game. No surprise, they go right back inside to Carmichael, and a soft touch, just a little too soft off the front of the rim. He caught it when he wanted it, but that time, Todd, I thought he faded on the jump shot yeah. as opposed to going straight up or even attacking the basket. Allen was giving on the right-hand side. It looked like he was expecting some help there. I tell you what, though, Massinet's doing an excellent job at dealing with this pressure. Because he's attacking, he's not just going left and right as Hill drives all the way to the basket. He's looking to attack the basket as opposed to just run his offense. Johnny Hill answers back with the runner. This is a good matchup here. Hill on Massinet. And they are going to call this one on number one, Tyler Brown, who had his back to the play, really kind of got pushed into it. <laughs> he certainly did. Watch Massinet this time. Looking to run the offense, Allen opens up just a bit, and he attacks him and takes him right to the basket. This is why he's so valuable, because not only can he run the ball club, but he's a threat to score the ball as well. Right there you see two guys colliding. All three of them are trying to figure out who the foul should be on as Lee knocks down a deep three. I take it, Todd, he's shaking off that injury yeah. from the first half. Looked like he hit hard on that right shoulder when there was no play or no foul called against his man, and he comes back and answers with a three to open up the second half. 
Brown off the front of the rim, but Iki's there to follow it. 50-46, 16-41 to play in the ball game. Again, attack to score. He's tough. He's tough. It looks like Brian Allen feels like he's going to get help, but he continues to open up on that right-hand side of Mass, and that's said, I'll take it. All night long. Opening up just a little bit too much. Oh. And Brian Allen hits a three, and he'll get the and one as Damian Lee came out and bumped him. Allen and Brown are as steel cigars as you'll see. Right there, Allen opens up. Massonet takes advantage. Two hard dribbles, gets to the elbow. And Allen says, anything you can do, son, I can do better. Two lefties going at it. Brian Allen may be reassessing the fact that Massonet is a lefty, forcing him right. Well, he certainly can go right. He's shown that. But you can't open up. Right. You have to shade him that way. He's totally turning his body, body giving him a straight line right. drive to the basket. And he's too good just to treat him like a kid that can't play. Allen completes the four-point play, so it's back to a two-point lead for Drexel. And here's the matchup we saw early in the game. The quick Allen on Massinet just pestering him again. Massinet doesn't get it to roll, but Ruffin puts it back. But you couldn't have asked for a better shot. Massinet is control controlling the entire tempo of the second half, I think. Casey Keen just checked back in. He's saddled with three fouls, but on the runner, he's able to convert. So. The Redbirds keeping pace with the Dragons as we go under 16 minutes to play. Lee wants it in the corner. Side slot. You got it. And the Redbirds are starting to heat up. They have taken the lead here for the first time in the second half. 55-54. Drexel Dragons have to get back in transition because Illinois State wants to play at this pace. They'll shoot quickly. They'll take gambles on defense. They want to play, as Dan Muller told us, they practice as quickly as physically possible. Shot clock under 10. Beautiful shot by Damian Lee, the seventh lead change of the game. Relock didn't get all of that one. And Freelock, give him credit, missing the short range down there, hustles back to get the rebound. Reward the big man when he runs the court. He's picking him up, putting him down. This pace, Todd, is incredible. These guys are changing ends. You know, both coaches are try probably trying to wait until the 12-minute mark for a timeout, but they may have to take one just to get some water. Now, this is early season stuff, and they are completely gassed. Now, I know the great John Thompson coach, he doesn't care about how gassed you are. You run, young man. You run or you come out. <laughs> Over and back in fraction, so the ball will go over to Illinois State. They have a one-point lead. And watch these people that he touched and that were familiar with the job and work that he'd done over his career. Able to call young Doug Collins' action when he was a Redbird back at Illinois State, and then their pass crossed again at Chicago Bulls. And our thoughts and prayers out to the Durham family on their loss. Great call that time by, by Dan Muller. M uh, Muller. He went to isolation for Brown. Out of the timeout, right. wanted to get him get him going. They needed a bucket, and he didn't score the basket, but they're at the free throw line. They ran him through to the left side of the court, cleared out everyone. Everyone went to the other side and let him go. Great call, I think. We had the opportunity in our drive over here to the arena tonight to talk about some great coaches. Of course, your father being one of my favorites, but, you know, Larry Brown and some of these coaches, Jack Ramsey, who've been a long time, I will say this, the young coaching crop that is coming up through the college ranks, mm -hmm. very impressive. I mean, you talk about Bruiser Flint, but Dan Muller mm -hmm. in his first turn as a head coach is really showing me something at 37. He seems to be, the way he handles his kids, he's calm but firm. You know, he has to sit out Jackie Carmichael, doesn't let him start for some infraction possibly with coach's decision. But he's kind of setting the tone for his program. Well, what's happened is they've had great tutelage. You yeah. know, they've had tremendous yeah. tutors. You know, he spent 12 years under Kevin Stallings, one of the best coaches in the country at yeah. Vanderbilt. You know, he learned it the right way. A guy like Bruiser Flint, 
working under Calipari. You know, a lot of young, sharp coaches. You know, John Thompson learning, you know, from my dad, yep. Hall of Famer, learning from Pete Carell. A lot of guys, they didn't just get jobs, they earned it. Speaking of earning it, Chris Fausch earning all three of those. That's the 6-2 guard from Bronx's Rice High School. Hits again his ninth point of the night. Carmichael showing his range, unable to drop it. And Ruffin with the rebound. So it's a one-point gain as we approach 13 minutes to play. And a beautiful block as Carmichael comes back. Drexel has to get back quicker, though. Miss baskets, turnovers. Illinois State is going to push the ball for 40 minutes. I was just about to say, Johnny Hill should back this one out. He doesn't have the numbers, and he's bailed out as the foul of block is called on Damian Lee. What happens is... Illinois State is trying to establish what their way is. You have a new coach. You have a new system. Right. You have new things. You have a new identity that you're trying to impart on your program. So he's going to let some things go. As the year progresses, he'll tighten some things up, pull some things back. But he told us in practice, we want to run. We want to play as fast as we possibly can. But we want to control the ball. Substitutions being made now as Brian Allen comes in alongside John Wilkins. Brown and Iki will step off the court for Dan Muller. And the DAC crew getting to the head of Johnny Miller. You know, the coaches in the CAA talk about coming here to Drexel and say, I've heard people say it's a scary place. It's not big. A lot of people say, oh, this is a great practice facility. Where's the arena? This is it. 2,532 crammed into here. It gets warm. It gets loud. And the fans, I mean, they're right on top of your bench. And if you're Bruiser Flint, you'll have it no other <laughs> way. This place is an absolute nuthouse tonight. Ruffin with another block. Drexel looking for their first win of the season, coming off an overtime loss at Kent State. This would be a big win as Illinois State looking to go 2-0 as they come off a big victory at home against UC Santa Barbara, 100-72. You look at these two teams. Offensively, you have a contrasting style. The Dragons, perimeter-oriented. Illinois State, they want to go inside with their bigs. But Drexel's guards play big at times. As you see, getting the big-time rebound, even though they're perimeter-oriented, that's Drexel, they want, they attack, they get points in the paint because they get closer to the basket, they drive. Great hustle by Derek Thomas to keep that alive. Faust lines up a three off the mark, Hill with the rebound. Too close. Carmichael down Too in close. his sweet spot, puts it up, can't get it to drop. That's all right, though. That's all right. That's good action. He caught the ball on the block. That could have been a foul call. It's a one-point game with 11.35. The run he went on last year was yep. incredible. Thought they should have been into the NCAA tournament. Ooh. Good slip that time by Carmichael. Excellent entry pass by Tyler Brown. Finds Carmichael. He picks up point number 15. So back in front go the Redbirds. And they're going to get Tyler Brown away from the ball. What's impressed you about either one of these teams and what you've seen tonight inside the DAC? Well, we knew about Carmichael. Um, as you see, the slip right here, and he gets the easy dunk. But the, uh, I really have to say that Damian Lee has just, yep. for Drexel, has just really impressed me with his ability to score and, and be efficient with his scoring for someone that's only a sophomore. You know, he's 6'6", he can slash, he can shoot the jumper, he uses screens well, he rushes, I mean, he, he hurries, but he never seems to be in a rush, you know, and then that's a hard balance to find as a scorer, particularly a young scorer. Get a good look at Lee on the bench, the 6'6 sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland. When you look at the offensive success that Carmichael's had tonight, it's because he has good foot dexterity. You know, McCoy and Ruffin, their foot movement is not good enough to keep up with him. So you see him get easy layups. In the post, you see him working and getting around. Conversely, McCoy and Ruffin are leaning on him, preventing him from getting the boards. They can't stop him offensively, but they're not letting him rebound. 
Derek Thomas called for the offensive foul, the senior from New York City pushing off, and it's a Illinois State ball at the turnover. 60-59, 11.05 to play, and that was Thomas' first foul of the game. Again, another clear out for Brown. Each time they've run a clear out for Brown, something positive has come up. Yeah. He's getting to the free throw line. He's putting pressure on guys. He's getting a good look. Great calls by Coach Muller. Derek Thomas picking up his second foul. So two fouls in 10 seconds. Really changing the momentum and slowing down the pace. With 10.55 to go. Tyler Brown, the senior from Owensboro, Kentucky, steps to the line. Next Thursday, the NBC Sports Network takes you to paradise for the elite preseason college basketball tournament. Don't miss Duke, Louisville, and other national powerhouses in the battle for Atlantis. It begins next Thursday at 7 Eastern on the NBC Sports Network. And I will reiterate again to our management that Ron and I are both available for that assignment to go to Bahamas. We are available and bags are packed. <laughs> I thought you got a call already. I did not get a call. Did you get a call at halftime? No. Oh, okay. Did not get the call. I got the phones <laughs> on mute, so uh, we'll turn it on immediately afterwards. But uh, that'll be a great tournament. Not only the, the talent level on the court, but the whole setting. When you get those kind of teams together early season, it, it's just so exciting. But you're getting, you're getting postseason play yeah. in the first half of the season. See, right now, Drexel, they're not using their bigs to score. They're just out there to set screens, get putbacks and get the perimeter guys open. Mazinet doing it on his own, and he draws the foul. But as you saw just then, their guards do a good job at getting points in the paint. Their bigs aren't scoring in the paint, but their guards are by getting to the rack or getting to the free throw line. So Keen's points, Mazinet's points, fouled by Keen, all came from the foul line in the first half. He has 14 points on the night, but 10 for 10 from the line. Substitutions coming from both squads with 10.22 to play. It's a two-point lead for Illinois State. As it at 12 for 12 from the line. It's a one-point game. Well, head coach Dan Muller told us at shoot-around this morning that he would be very surprised it was more than a five-point lead for either squad with four minutes to play, and it's looking like he knows what he's talking about. Excellent defense once again. Stepping on the line was Brian Allen, so the ball will go back over to the Dragons. Watch this. Caught the ball. Good job at receiving ball. That's too close. He spun. But just couldn't get to the other side. And what's happening is you see now his legs are a little bit weary. McCoy, Ruffin, they've been leaning on him, banging him. You know, that energy that you had in the first half, when you have those guys that are that big banging on you for 40 minutes, it wears on you. That one rattles in and out. I tell you, Abiff got that offensive rebound for the Dragons just by crashing the boards, bumping into Carmichael. 11th lead change of the game. And this time they're going to get McCoy. Good job that time, I thought, by Carmichael and not selling for a jump shot. He tried to get closer to the basket, which drew the foul. Right here, watch a bit. He comes in, bangs into Carmichael just a bit. Drexel comes up with the loose ball. And that is the fourth foul on Daryl McCoy. There's where it was, a little too much action. Goes for the up and under. McCoy's like, what did I do? I tell you what you did. That 290 just ran into him. Two big boys going at it with 9.36 to play. It's a one-point lead for the Dragons as Carmichael steps to the line. Rattles out on the one and one. Once again, it's Allen hassling Mazinet. Brown doing a good job at denying Fouch. Now Drexel has to reset and try another play. Illinois State, that possession did a good job at taking Drexel out of their half-court set. 
Ball comes free, turnover. Here comes Illinois State. Allen can't answer. Good pass, good push. It's a biff on the end of a beautiful bounce pass, and it's a three-point Dragon lead. Up and under. A biff comes out with it. Faust thought about the three, kicked it back out. Massinet will reset. The DAC crew coming alive. Massinet will draw the foul as Jackie Carmichael had to take it right to him. Rush is good, good in and out that time by Thomas. Pushes it hard. Nice pass to the Biff. But Biff got that basket because he sprinted the floor hard. So Massinet goes back to the line somewhere he has completely set up camp tonight. And it continues to be perfect. One of the reasons Massinet seems to be getting to the basket with reckless abandon is because Illinois State's perimeter, they have to stay wide on their shooters, on Drexel's shooters. They can't slough off and give help. So by the time Massinet turns the corner on his man, he's already at the basket because the perimeter guys, you know, uh, for, for Drexel can knock down Fouch. He can right. knock down those perimeter jump shots. Lee, they can knock down that shot from the perimeter. And Massinet misses his first free throw of the night. Drexel in the midst of a 7-0 run as we go under eight minutes to play in the ball game. Oh, my goodness. Tyler Brown got up in the air, hung there for a while, and he's bailed out with a foul as Massinet came over to help out. Good job that time. Good rotation by Drexel, but they were inside that circle. Right here, you see. His foot is in. In the CAA, the regular season champ, Hale from Philadelphia, and is, of course, the Drexel Dragons. The last year in the tournament, in the conference playoff championship game, they ran up against a very tough VCU squad. They certainly did. You know, for the, to have the kind of year that they had to get to that point, to have to play a team that tough and to come up on the short end of, end of the stick had to be frustrating. But even though they had that loss, this team should have been in the, in the NCAA tournament. Well, you're just going to get to that. They call it Snub Sunday around here at 29 and 7. They go 16 and 2 in conference, but it's not enough to get them into the NCAA tournament. And there is the last time they made an appearance back in 1996. And they are looking to change that this year. And a lot of pressure we've talked about on Bruiser Flip in his spot with so much talent coming back and ability. Preseason favorites to win the CAA. Players like Franz Mazinet, the CAA preseason player of the year. Right now, they've got their hands full with a very tough Redbird squad from Illinois State. With Doug Collins, the head coach of the 76ers, an alum in the stands watching. We've got ourselves a 66-62 Drexel lead with 7.50 to play in the ballgame. With seven minutes, 50 seconds to go in this game, look for both coaches now to start defensively and offensively going with their bread and butter plays. They're not going to drift. They're not going to experiment. You know, they're going to try to stick with whatever packages they have that they think they're best at to try to close out this game. Three-point game. Doug Collins, 20, Illinois State. This time, Illinois State switched to the zone full-court press. They got out of the man-to-man full-court, go zone, see if they can force a turnover or use time. Again, now they're in the zone half-court, the 2-3. Drexel had no problem with this in the first right. half. Actually did a great job against it. Shot clock at 5. Long rebound comes the way of the freshman Kaysa King. Brown thought about it. And his pass knocked away. Great defense by Franz Mazanet. Up 
Under seven to play. Penetration by Massinet. Put the ball right where Thomas needed it. Nailed it. Travel on the freshman. Dragons in the midst of a 10-1 run as they have opened up a six-point lead with 6.26 to play in the ball game. Important possession right now, yep. defensively, I think, for Illinois State. They, they're, right now, they're down six. They need a stop. They don't want them to, they don't want to give up a three and, and six go to nine or get a two and they go to eight. Then the crowd gets even louder. Then when they come down on offense, then, then their arms get a little tight. Short shots fall a little short. They want to get a stop right here. Double team comes, but a little late. Carmichael was trying to get Keen to come up. Mazin in open lane, kicks it out. Look who's waiting. Mr. Efficient. Damian Lee. Excellent job, though, in patience by Drexel. They caused the switch, they threw it back to Massinet, and he penetrated and kicked it to Lee. Oof, well, round. Tyler Brown answers with a deep three. Ice water in his veins. That time, it was a friend. It's a 5.47 to play here inside the deck as head coach Bruiser Flint is looking for his 200th victory as the head coach. And Sam Cozen, who the court is named after, sits on top with 213. But there's Bruiser. He's done a great job. He's done an excellent, excellent job at taking this Drexel Dragon program from ground zero to building it to where it is now. That's a good coach has come through and as it plays out the way a lot of people in the CA think, Drexel Dragons and Bruiser Flint, he should be the all-time winningest coach here at Drexel by the season's end. But right now, he's more concerned about getting this victory as he has a very precarious five-point lead with 5.36 to play in the game. Thomas kicks it out to Lee in a dangerous pass, and they'll put it back in the hands of Franz Mazinet. Great job by Carmichael coming back to help. Brian Allen will check back in, and he's been the biggest disruptor for Drexel's offense as he comes in and probably assigned to Franz Mazinet and to hassle him. Well off the mark and off the hands of Ruffin over to Illinois State. So 5-16 to play. We've got ourselves a five-point game. If you're in the corner of Dan Muller and Illinois State, what are you telling your kids? Nothing's changing right now. It's the only thing you want to make sure you do is you get a solid look at the basket. You don't have to rush. You don't have to shoot too quickly. Look to go inside to Carmichael as and, much as you can. And get an and one if you can. Or get an and one if you're Hill. <laughs> Johnny Hill driving the baseline. He gets the bucket and the harm. He'll go to the line. But this is good action right here. You know, he drove hard to the basket, didn't settle for the jump shot. And he, again, McCoy picks up the, another nickel dimer, and he's done. That's his fifth foul. So Daryl McCoy, the 6'9 senior from Hartford, Connecticut, has fouled out of the game, and that's a big body that's giving problems to Jackie Carmichael throughout the night. They'll have to lean a lot heavier now on Abiff and Thomas and the crew, including Ruffin. Five oh six to play in the ball game. And that'll put Johnny Hill at the line. What's tough about this foul? as well as them not having McCoy's big body out there, is you're giving Illinois State an opportunity to put points on the board with the clock stop. The, the clock right now becomes as big an opponent as the person you're playing against. 
you have to manage time, you have to manage the score. And that's where a heady point guard comes into play. So Carmichael will come out, they'll sub him for John Wilkins, who'll probably get a quick breather, and then they'll bring him back in as we almost are at five minutes. And I keep referring back to the conversation we had with head coach Dan Muller about if this game's more than four or five points with four or five minutes to go, I'll be very surprised. Well, he's Nostradamus because <laughs> right now it's 71-69. Well, you've got two experienced teams with good guard play and solid post play. These teams are very well matched. Mazinet triggering the offense as he drives. He is fouled. Number 22, Jake Eakey. The junior from Independence, Missouri, called for the foul. Massinet is doing an excellent job coming down the final stretch at just dictating everything that, that um, Drexel does. He, he, go, he goes when he wants to go. He pulls it back out when he wants to pull it out. He's penetrating, getting shots for the right people. 18 points on the night. 14 and 15 from the line. I want to remind you, Tuesday night at 8 Eastern, college basketball continues on the NBC Sports Network with a matchup between Harvard and St. Joe's. And Wednesday night, the Red Hawks of Miami of Ohio take on William and Mary, the tribe. It's college basketball on the NBC Sports Network. Three-point ball game as we approach four and a half minutes to play. Brown throws it up. He was looking for the lob. And came off the rim. John Wilkins had no shot. You know, risky, risky play for this point in the game. Brown would have been better off trying to shoot the ball than throw a crap a lot to Wilkins. So the foul on Wilkins, his third, team eight. Now said rough into the line at the other end. For both teams, free throw shooting is vital right now. You know, whichever team can convert down the stretch. See, it's not always how many points you score, but when you score them, when you're able to score them. And free throws are going to be very key right now. So Ruffin hits the front end of a one and one pushes the lead out to four points now. This is the second. So Illinois State looking to come away with a two or a three if they can get it. No time to panic yet. just yet. They can score quickly. Brown again drops it in low, and it's Eki. Jake Eki, 6'7 junior from Independence. Again, both teams are in the one and one. No senseless fouls. Let's see which team can ex execute coming down the stretch. So after the John Eakey basket, it's a 73-71, and Illinois State has the turnover. Allen's going to slow it down. Highs move. Brown will fire it up. Last test by Eakey. We've got ourselves a two-point ball game with 339. So you know why? Because he stayed within himself. He didn't try to be what he wasn't, and he knew what he was, and he worked hard at being and doing what he was. Back on the court, 73-71. Drexel has the lead over Illinois State. They are now applying the Redbirds a full-court press. Drexel having no problems breaking it. A little confusion on the defense. They drop back into the 2-3. Change of pace, trying to keep Drexel back on their heels a little bit. The chess match has begun. Ruffin keeps it alive. It's not how many points you score. It's not how many rebounds you get. It's when you get them. Fresh shot clock, more importantly, is we're under three minutes to play. Thomas having problems with the ball, kicks it out, Mazinet wide open. Oh, that rims in and out, but it will stay once again with Drexel. But Illinois State's got to get on the offensive boards. Long jump shot that time by Drexel, and then the ball comes right under the basket. Those bigs in there have to clean that up. John Eakey checking back into the game for head coach Dan Muller. Again, 
another, look for another pick and roll. There you go. Mastodon's tough. He's so tough with the pick and roll. Dragons being very patient that time. Great defensive help as Jackie Carmichael came over. Great defense by Carmichael. Comes over, gets the block, and more importantly, Illinois State secured the ball. Well, the Dragons got three cracks at it. Couldn't come away with any points. So now, with just a two-point lead, Illinois State gets their opportunity. Go right to their big man. Carmichael Good leads patience. up and under. Good patience that time. I thought he was going to settle for the jump shot, and he came with an up and under. Great patience. And he showed you, his, his, he gave you two counters. Went hard one way, came back, and then came, ended with an up and under. 17 points for Carmichael. Remember, he had 11 at the half, and Bruiser Flint wants a timeout to talk about this. This game is going to come down to the wire. It, it, it definitely is. On the defensive end, Carmichael making his presence felt, and then the Redbirds know where their bread and butter is. Go to the big man, up and under. We're all even with a minute 40 to play. We're all even at 73 here in Philadelphia. 140 to play. Todd Harris alongside Ron Thompson in a good one. Missouri Valley Conference and Illinois State paying a visit to the Drexel Dragons out of the CAA. For Drexel, look for Mastin Nutter to control things on the offensive end for Illinois State. It's got to go inside to the big fella. No question about it. So here we go, Massanet triggering the offense for the Dragons. Shot clock now under 14 seconds. Working out the pick and roll, drives the lane, kicks it back out. Mr. Offense Foch cannot get it to fall. And the officials are going to talk about it. Good crew tonight with Mike Sanziri, Dan Krishman, and Zelton Steed, who had the best view came in and said last touch by the Dragons. Those guys are working hard, helping each other out. They're hot, just as hot as we are in here. They're working. Great job tonight. Way good assist by Steve. Got to give it to him. Find a way. Stay patient. There you go. Ruffin on the defense. Does a great job. Eki almost able to keep it alive, but it goes back to the Dragons. Under a minute to play now, we're still all even. And they fall back into the zone. Do you like the zone, or do you think they should go to the man-to-man? -man? Actually, I thought it was a good change of play. Pace, they weren't successful in, in the first half, but the second half, Drexel hadn't scored as easily as they did in the first. Good, good call. They've stuck with what's worked. Massanet comes off the screen. Beautiful bounce pass. Good job that time, I thought. By Thomas, he waited for Massanet to commit. And he kept working without the ball. Of his first half points from the free throw line, he's got 18 points, seven assists, 14 of 16 from the free throw line. If you're the Redbirds, who do you get the ball to? Oh, you got to go inside to Carmichael. Carmichael's not there. Look for Brown or Allen on the jump shot. Brown on the curl comes across, off the mark, and Carmichael was cutting towards the middle of the key. He was out of position. And the foul finally comes on John Eakey, number 22, as they send Derek Thomas to the line for the one and one. And Bruiser Flint looked at Massinet like, you need to go get the ball. Exactly. <laughs> Massinet on the night, 14 of 16 from the free throw line. So I'm thinking Bruiser saying, just get the ball to number four and everyone else clear out. Bruiser didn't want to hear, don't tell me he dribbled, don't tell me he ran away from me. Go get the ball. These two free throws are key. This is the first trip to the line for Thomas. He's got 11 points as the DAC goes quiet. Off the mark on the one and one. There's time. Iowa State opted not to go for a time. Oh, they called the time. There you go. Okay. So Hill gets it across the timeline with seven and a half seconds to play and and one. The 
officials have to tell Bruiser, you're not part of the team on the court. You got to get off the court. <laughs> Bruiser's already out there at half mid-court. He's going to run the play. Here we go. John Eakey keys it into Hill. Hill finds Carmichael. Carmichael drives the lane. The layup soft. Foul is called. Not the most conventional way to get Carmichael the ball, but the big man put it on the ground and drove it. Well, he took advantage of his ability to put the ball on the floor. You know, as we said in the first half, he has good foot dexterity. He has the ability to put the ball on the floor. You know, Ruffin thought he was backing out of the way. Yeah. And the official said, I'm going to give it to you anyway. Five of seven from the line make it six of eight. And Bruce is looking at the officials. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Well, let's look at that one more time if we can. It looks like he's got the step, but when he goes up to take the shot, he's, it looks like he's lost control of the ball. It looked like he lost control, and it looked like he, he pushed off with his offhand. As you see, uh, if he makes it, what do you do? If he misses it, what do you do? Two seconds left. If you make it, you know, uh, don't call timeout. Just try to go. And he hits it. Here you go. So two seconds. Bruiser's going to make some substitutions here, get some three-point folks in the game. You know Fausch has got to be near the ball as well as Lee. Illinois State, keep everyone in front of you. Don't let anyone get behind you. Make them take as deep a shot as possible. Ruffin will trigger the inbound. Intercepted by Carmichael. Fouch lets it go. It'll be well short. How do you feel about overtime? Oh, let's buckle up and let's see what we got. And we, and we said this. You've got two experienced teams, a lot of upperclassmen on both on both sides, two teams that have played game situations that you go over and practice. You practice for these situations. You prepare for these situations. Now it's time to see which one of your guys in this early season have been playing attention. And the head coach of the Drexel Dragons, Bruiser Flint, telling his fellows, guys, one overtime, I understand, but two overtimes in a row, trying to get me to get my 200th win. <laughs> Turnover coming the way as Tyler Brown got in the lane and shuffled his feet. Bruiser Flint would love to get number 200 tonight. Remember, first game of the year, they lose to Kent State in overtime, 66-62. Allen, if anyone, has been the most effective on Massanet. Faust, their three-point assassin, also on the floor. Gives them a pump fake, drops hard. The weak side help wasn't there. Strong, strong finish. They take this early lead in the overtime. 13 points for Chris Faust, the senior from the Bronx, New York. Five minutes of overtime here at the DAC in Philadelphia. A foul called. And they're going to get number 32, Derek Thomas, the man who gave the lead with 30 seconds left in the game. Look at Faust. Nice little head fake, attacks hard, and is able to finish on the other end. Anytime you're guarding a shoot, if, if you're a shooter, having a head fake in your repertoire is always a huge plus because they have to respect it. Third foul on Derek Thomas. Derek Thomas, excuse me, and that'll send Brown to the line. Again, right now, 3 minutes, 59 seconds here in overtime. It's a game of inches. You know, you can't give too much offensively. You can't give too much defensively. Both, both ways, you have to be strong with the ball when you're on offense. Defensively, you have to understand the scouting report and player tendencies. And that one's hard. And the Dak crew comes alive. Tyler Brown hits the second one, so it's a one-point game with 3.55 to play in overtime. Massinet looking for the screen. This is how they trigger their offense. Wilkins comes over on the switch. A biff off the mark. Carmichael the rebound and he goes down holding his ankle. He's trying to get rid of it before. Sure. Yeah, he came down and his legs buckled. I thought it was his knee, but it, he's grabbing his ankle. 
Tells the ref he's okay. You see, he goes up strong, and he drops mm. just a little. His ankle looked like it rolled just a bit. And a lot of that, we're in overtime. It's fatigue. You know, you got big guys banging on you. You know, the, your body gives out. They're going to get him on the side, give him something to drink, tighten his shoe up, and get him back in there. Left ankle for Jackie Carmichael. So he comes Ruffin, out of the game. Ruffin is cramping. And Ruffin now down on the baseline. Yep. Grabbing his right calf. With the heat in this arena, with as hard as both teams have yeah. played, it's bound to happen. Carmichael now is gone. Drexel Dragon lead over Illinois State Redbirds. Everything seems to be going through Massanet as Faust steps up and fires a three. Thomas comes away with the rebound but goes to the ground. And he's called for the turnover. Yes, yeah, slippery that in. He come up from under him, yeah. Ball knocked away. Turnovers both ways. Abiff filling the lane and one. But Abiff got that ball because Massinet got all the way to the basket, drew all the Illinois State defenders, and he threw it back. Watch this. Two guys run to Massinet, and then Abiff is wide open, and he attacks the, bo the boards and finishes. Tyler Brown picking up his fourth on the play as the help came late. 2.50 to play in overtime. It's a three-point lead, and Abiff goes to the line. Kazembe Abiff from Elizabeth, New Jersey, the sophomore. And the Go Birds cheer does it for the second time. It's a fall. Huge basket from Tyler Brown. They come right back with their leader, and it's off the shoulder. Carmichael thought he was pushed out of bounds. Watch Look Tyler Brown squares his shoulders, squares his feet, comes off the screen with confidence, and gets the shooter's touch. Same touch you had, right? Oh no, no, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. The older you get, the, the foggier your memory gets. The older you get, the better you were. <laughs> That's right. Full 35 seconds on the shot clock. 2.24 to play in overtime. Drexel has the ball. Chris Fausch will trigger the inbound. They immediately get it to Mazinet. Kick and roll again. Draws two, dishes. Too hard that time. Good rebound by John Eakey. Stay patient. Inside out. Play inside out. 15 seconds on the clock is a lot of time. Maybe the best defense right now as they've got Carmichael nowhere near the basket. Carmichael needs to get inside a little bit. Green comes, Brown goes the other way and does it himself. Harding of the Red Sea. Wow. Everyone just opened up and he took advantage and went all the way. Tyler Brown has no fear. You know, he, he will shoot it anytime, anywhere. But why he's so tough is he can catch and shoot and he can go yeah. off the bounce. He can create his own shot. His first step is deadly. Intercepted. Jackie Carmichael doing a number there. So under a minute eight to play. And it's Illinois State on top by two. Carmichael has made that play two or three times today where he's sided his man, played three quarters on the side, and anticipated the pass and made the steal without fouling. Tyler Brown has all six of the Redbirds points in overtime. Try so to while get... Drexel may be keen on Carmichael, Brown doing the damage. Exactly. 
Oh, and a beautiful shot by Johnny Hill as the shot clock was expiring. Tough, tough finish by Hill. Hill silently has played a really tough game. Defensively, did a great job on Massinet. Now he's scoring, finishing right when they need him. Four-point lead and a 7-0 run for the Redbirds. Strong move to the lane by Derek Thomas. Cuts the lead in half. Right now, it's going to be key for Drexel to try to get a stop. This is a wow. job. Everyone just opened up. Everyone ran to, mass, uh, to uh, Carmichael because they thought they were going to go to him, and he got to the basket. And Carmichael on the other end, tough, tough defense, and then Hill with the drive and the finish. Tyler Brown really stepping up here in the latter part of this game and in overtime. Plays a lot like, and I know I'm going to throw an old name out there, not that old, Rod Strickland. Interesting. Interesting. Rocket Rod Strickland. I watched Tyler. Yeah, full court full press court. for the first time tonight. And a timeout called. Dan Muller saw some situations there he did not like, namely his best player, Jackie Carmichael, being double teamed down. They were either going to get him. You have to be able to get open in crunch time to get the ball. All knocked away by Massanet. See, Drexel has nothing to get to lose by being overly aggressive. Right. If the ref calls a foul, so what? If the ref misses it, we get a steal and we're right under our basket. Beautiful. Allen, who played football at Minnesota, and wide open is Carmichael. Faust comes over for the foul to keep the instant two. And Muller's looking for the... Good job that time by Illinois, Iowa, Illinois State keeping their head up, not getting consumed with the pressure that Drexel applied and finding the open men. I was going to say, Coach was looking for the flagrant. So with 19.7 of 9 from the line, Jackie Carmichael calmly steps up and knocks the first one down. Imagine if you're a first-year coach and we tell you, look, your first year, we're going to give you the player of the year of the conference. We're going to also give you two of the most effective scores in the backcourt in the conference. Yep. Heck of a luxury to have walking in the door. And we're going to upgrade your locker rooms. And we're going to upgrade your locker rooms in the coaches' offices. <laughs> and we're going to give you a plane. We're going to charter down. We're going to charter some flights as well. Under 10 seconds to play, no time here, and a timeout call. Bruiser Flint gets to it, not happy the way his team was executed. No timeouts left for the Dragons. Eric Thomas will inbound. Faust lines up a big three and hits it. Now you got to pick up. You got to pick up quickly and go for the steal. Foul called with 4.6 seconds. It is a one-point game. And now it's all on the shoulders of Johnny Hill. Good execution. Felt wow. square at his feet. Nice follow through. Nailed it. Muller stayed calm, though. <laughs> He's not that big, but he stayed calm. He stayed calm. Looking to go 2 and 0 oh as a first year head coach. Bruiser Flint looking for his 200th win. And he hits it. Clutch, clutch. Each little point helps. So here we go. Even if he hits this one and you think, well, would he be better off missing it? But then it becomes a three-point to win it. Anything to slow them down. Remember, Drexel has no timeouts. 43 of the 45 minutes, this was a five-point or closer game. Here we are in overtime. It's a two-point game. Don't try to miss it. Try and make it. Rattles in and out. Push it. 